Okay, so we have to have a roundish ball for it, but it also has to have a mouth mouthpiece. So you want to slap it around with your hand until you get that shape. And it's almost like a uh, nice rounded back, and then it gets flatter as it goes toward the mouthpiece. And that's so that the air can ro roll around. You want the bottom to be flat. And smooth it down so that you have so this big kind of bulbous back to it with a smaller, more slender front. I wonder if you're gonna be able to hear me over all the smacking. Um, okay, watch me do this part and then we'll, and I'm gonna do two separate videos that way. Add them together later. Um, after you get it to a nice shape, you're gonna take the wire tool and you're gonna cut it in half. And that's because you need to create, uh, you need to get an uh, air pocket cut out. But the way you wanna do that is you wanna make sure that your mouthpiece stays solid. So since this is my mouthpiece, I'm gonna mark it and keep it about a half an inch thickness of the walls. And I wanna do that on each side. And I wanna keep that mouthpiece there and solid. That has something to do later. It's important to make sure that's like that. And then once you have it lined up is when you get to carve it out. So you use one of the carving tools and just go in, dig it out. Y'all know these steps. This is the easy steps, right? Steps we've all done a hundred times now. Oh, if you mess up like I did, that's fine. Just move it back. Probably helps if you use a bigger digging tool than I have. Uh, whatever though, that's fine. But you want to get it to where it's about the same all the way around. Half inch. And see how it's a nice kind of cavernous size and like in there, like think about an audience hall or something. It's very rounded so it can echo well. <coughs> Just smooth it down on the inside is that uh, any, anything that's not smooth will actually hinder uh, the sound. It won't have as clear of a sound. So I'm just gonna smooth it down really well. Also, this helps make it sure it's not too thick in some spots and thinner in others. I could probably dig more clay out, but for this I'm not. Obviously up front too, up top, that's a little thick. So you do it to both sides. See, I have air holes coming out. Those are air bubbles that I didn't wedge out. If you ever wondered if they're actually air bubbles in the clay or if I'm just lying to you, they are actually there. know what the definition for bulbous is because I just think it means round but I'm not really sure if that is that is that it are we I'm sure about that yeah like a pimple <clears throat> is that what you call a pimple is bulbous <laughs> a little commentary for my videos a little extra <laughs> there's one of I did of me and Miss Cook talking as she recorded it all right so then I'm gonna smooth the inside of that half down Kept my um, pretty good, decent thickness of the wall. It's a little under half an inch probably. It's probably more like a fourth of an inch down there, which is fine. I just don't want it too thin. So now I have them both cleared out. I need to reattach them. And I'm gonna use some slip and 
this tool here to scratch it up. Give it nice, good scratches. See a lot of heavy texture on there that makes it better. One of the things about slipping and scoring, I mentioned it at the very first of the year. I don't know, I don't think it ever stuck though with you guys, um, is when you're doing this, you wanna make sure they're good, thick scratches in there. Your slip, and it actually helps if when you're putting it back together, you kind of press it together and then you wiggle it. And that helps the bonding too. So it keeps it to better, together better. So you see you have a seam, but that seam has to go away. Best way to do that is to scratch it up. This is not the best done well, most well done one I've ever done, but it's gonna work. So once you have it all scratched up, then you can just use this side to move the clay around. It's a good way to help smooth things and to help the ceiling bond back together. Strong, nice strong bond so they won't split while it's drying because that's a problem. That's why I love these tools, these little serrated ribs. They make life easier. All right, so once it's put back together is when you make the uh, wind hole, which is where you're gonna put your in your mouthpiece, which is where you blow into. Now the easiest steps I've found for this is using two popsicle sticks. One popsicle stick is gonna go into the mouth hole, to the wind area, and you'll feel it break through. And when you feel it break through, you can stop that means it went through the thick part of your mouthpiece. So what I generally do after this is I want to measure how big my um, voicing hole should be. It shouldn't be too big. It should be about the size of the popsicle stick. So I'm just gonna put a line there so that I know. Now the voicing hole needs to start kind of where your mouthpiece part ends. Put it right there because I think that might be it. And it just goes straight up and you'll stop when you feel the popsicle stick below. And then this has to go down at a 45 degree angle. So you can pull at it and push back and clear that extra clay out. This is the ramp that you're making now. You see it's not very wide, it's not very thick. You can see what's going on, but you see it's a lot of clay in there, so I'm gonna clear some of that out with a needle tool. I'm just gonna... And also, because now this clay that you made on that ramp, you press down, so it's gonna stick a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it down slightly to detach it and slide it on out. You might see a little bit of clay collect right there. If that's the case, you just kind of move it away because it will distract. Um, it will hinder, uh, mess up the sound. Uh, I did a little too far back, but I can fix that. Because the way um, this works, I'm right kind of tool, um, the error, I came back too far. Um, and if that happens, then you can fix it, but the air has to hit it directly. So it can't have anything blocking it. Um, and it has to be able to pass out to it easily which makes it a little bit more complicated. So I'm actually gonna push this back some so that it's more of a direct path. Push it through again. When I see a direct, what I mean in a direct path is what we talked about in the videos or in the images I showed you where this is going straight down. And you have the, this part is working together in there to press the air through. Now I should be able to look through my mouthpiece and see a little sliver of light. And if it's kind of dirty in there, I can clean it up. Watch me do all this and then it not work.
yep, what I said. It's not always 100% uh, accurate. It's trial and error a lot of times. Everybody has to keep kind of trying. This is not an easy science. So I'm gonna try again to get this right. So I'm gonna try to make it a little thinner. Give it a straight line, straight and clean as I can make it. And I'm gonna pull it out. So that's starting to get the sound. And I can mess around with that and see like if I press it up or if I press it down or if I make the air wave smaller in there. But you see, can you get the camera down to see how in here you have the air hole, see how it's kind of big. If it's not sounding too right, I can pull it up down here at the bottom um, and create a little bit of a thinner hole to come through. And that might help direct the sound uh, more accurately and help it sound better and more pure and not as breathy. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's just kind of a trial and error thing.